Hey, babe, did you... What are you doing? Research. Research. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. That somehow involves Twilight's ass. Yeah. I'm right here, you know. Babe? Oh, now you're ignoring me, huh? Hey, babe, I'm wearing that thing you like. Babe, do these socks make my butt look big? Uh, Oh, hey, that peach butt. At least you actually notice it. Have you had your buffalo chicken today? (sighs) Sorry, bro. Watchful is doing this thing involving Twilight and is completely ignoring me. Well, to be fair, Watch has always had a thing for Twilight even before you two got together. Let's not forget the time he tried to sing into her outside of a castle. Look around the room, I can tell that you are the most beautiful girl in the room. In the whole wide room, yeah. And don't get me started when I peeked at his laptop. There's so much porn! Alright, good point. Still, I want him to at least notice me a little more. I mean, come on, I'm no alicorn, but you know I've got the peaches. Well, maybe I can think of something to do to you to really make you stand out. Uh, I need an adult? I am an adult. Greetings, Brothers and Pegasus. This is the Watch of Pony here, where it's our six year anniversary! That's right, holy crap, I can't believe I've been doing this for six years. God, I'm old. But let's not worry about that because it's a new year, which means a whole new year of content on the way. Even though this one was a little late. Okay, I was on vacation, give me a break. In any case, usually when I do my anniversary videos, I usually do something big involving the fandom. Like I did two top 10 analysis videos, for example. And of course I did my review of Magical Mystery Cure where I turned into, uh, this. So let's keep that tradition going, only this time I'm gonna be doing something a little different. Instead of looking at an aspect from the fandom, or say, an episode individually, this time I want to look at an aspect, specifically a character, and specifically Twilight Sparkle. Now I don't think Twilight is exactly a hated character in the fandom, I'm pretty sure most people really like her. So out of the blue it may not seem like that big of a deal to do a character study on Twilight Sparkle, but what if I told you that Twilight was in my top 10 favorite characters in all of fiction? Not just My Little Pony, everything I've ever seen. So much so, that Twilight would honestly be in a course of the hero's journey if I ever taught it in a college. I'm sure now I have your attention. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into analyzing why Twilight is such an amazing character. So I guess first things first, what do we know about Twilight's character as far as the entire arc of the show? Well, let's start from the beginning. Twilight started out as an introvert with basically no friends whatsoever. 
So basically, there's two things going on here. I can't help but feel like Twilight's characterization is the reason why so many people latched on and became bronies. And no, it's not just because of Terra Strong, though that is a plus. No, I'm talking about the fact that Twilight is portrayed as an introvert. I think a lot of bronies out there do relate to an introverted character. I can definitely speak from personal experience that I definitely was endeared. Because I was and still am an introvert to this day. So I kind of immediately became endeared to Twilight. So I have a feeling a lot of people were endeared to Twilight. But it wasn't just that. Through very subtle means, they show all of the characteristics of Twilight. Like her being in a library instantly tells us that he's smart. But they do implement a healthy amount of character flaws like, say, her treatment of Spike. And at least they improved on those character flaws. As you said with any character, and best of all, it was only just the beginning as eventually she did get friends. Showing that just because you're an introvert doesn't automatically mean you can't have friends. I mean, hell, look at me, I've got a ton of friends and I'm an introvert. And then from there, it was time for the long game for Twilight's character. What I mean by that is that essentially, Lauren Faust, once he originally created so, wanted Twilight's character to essentially be Celestia's successor, to take over for Celestia and run all of Equestria in her absence. I had a vision for the, the destinies of all these characters. I wanted Rarity to get her shop in Canterlot. I wanted Rainbow Dash to become a Wonderbolt. I wanted Twilight Sparkle to eventually um, become Celestia's successor. And that was the ultimate endgame over the span of pretty much nine years. Yep, this was pretty much something that was set up for all nine seasons. And yeah, there were some seasons where not much really happened, but ultimately that was the end game of it, and it worked for the most part. Slowly but surely, there were seasons that introduced more and more to Twilight's character, be it small things like finding out that C had a brother, that we never found out C had, but that's kind of a different story. But there was also the more important big stuff like, well, Twilight Coin. Not only showing her ability to think on your feet, learn magic very well, and earn her right to be a princess, but also just look more like a princess. A decision I am still baffled got as much hate as it did, but I hear next to nothing about it nowadays now that the show's over. So ultimately, I'm not gonna worry about the backlash it caused and more focus on the fact that it was a build-up to her ultimate goal. And slowly but surely, watching all the main episodes that were about Twilight's character arc, it hit me. This is basically Child's first hero's journey. That classic trope in all of literature of someone coming from nothing or next to nothing, maybe somewhere privileged, and then rising up and becoming the hero we all need. And yes, because of me saying Twilight is basically on the hero's journey, I am saying Twilight is basically Luke Skywalker, and I'm okay with that. Although, for that to work, Twilight would need someone that was basically overthrowing her. That was like the inverse of an oh. Okay, before people jump on me, no, I'm not saying Starlight is anywhere near as cool as Darth Vader. Hell no. What I am saying is that this is covering the whole gambit of a hero's journey. Through Twilight and in turn helping her become more interesting as well as the story itself, it slowly covers everything in the hero's journey through Twilight. Although I guess the question is who would be Starlight Glimmer's Darth Sidious? Chrysalis? <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe not, but you get my point. What I'm trying to say is that kids sure learn about the hero's journey, and it's still an interesting story type to this day. But besides just being hero, there are many other aspects to look up to. To explain what I mean, let's go all the way back to the beginning. No, 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 I don't mean episode one. I mean Sonic Rainboom. Where we see that Twilight actually kind of struggled with her magic. For someone who grew up to be the strongest magic user in all of Equestria, C actually was not as powerful as we all thought when C first started. Which, yeah, I know that should be a no duck considering, well, C should be flawed since, you know, Mary Sue and all that. But even still, it could have been very easy for them to just make her powerful from the start. So, but she becomes much more relatable when you find out that she had to struggle and learn. Even though we did see that she did have latent magical abilities, that doesn't change the fact that she had to learn and strive to get better with it. And then when she pretty much peaked, she decided to spread her knowledge to other people, allowing Twilight to slowly embody many different aspects of people children look up to. The prodigy from her early years, the hero, I mean, the show itself in general, the teacher when she starts to school with all of her friends, and of course the successor when Celestia decides to retire. But none of that really mattered unless she was humbled from time to time, and even Twilight had to be humbled and learn that she wasn't perfect. Granted, there are times where that was taken a little too far, but I can forgive that. And through all the experience, she finally succeeded Celestia, slowly showing through experience and learning that you can arise and become great, even if you start from simple beginnings. And showing that the really key to success is determination, love, conviction, and of course lots and lots of magic. Oh yeah, and the friendship thing, but mostly magic. 
And then Twilight basically became the pony every child would want to strive to be. You know, in hindsight, this seems a lot more simpler than I was expecting, but well, Twilight isn't exactly a character that needs to be complex. And that's why I think she's one of the best characters ever written. But I would basically be explaining the show if I went any further, so I'm gonna end it here. Thank you all so much for enjoying this episode, and I want to apologize that this took way longer than it should have to come out. I was a little overspent as far as money after my little mini vacation. Luckily, as of this recording, I'm pretty much back on my feet at this point. Of course, if you want to prevent that and like this and want to support the show and want to see more stuff like it, I do have a Patreon. Just a little shameless plug there. And hopefully now that this video is done, I can get back to making regular content for you guys. Anyway, I'm the Watcher Pony and... Obey! I've got a haircut, babe. You like? Babe? Uh... Babe? Huh. Good job. You killed him. Me? You gave me the haircut? I merely gave you the weapon. That's not a crime. Oh, sure. Shift the blame. Very classy. In any case, he's passed out, so have at him. As for you, the audience, Watch should be back in time to do something Love Month related. Hopefully. Till next time.